Advanced Menu is an alternative front end for Onion OS on the MIUI Mini and MIUI Mini Plus. It doesn't get much coverage, but it really is a gorgeous front end. The main thing that sets it apart are the video previews. Depending on the layout you picked for Advanced Menu, you will have video previews along with audio playing for each game. After some time has passed, we'll start displaying video previews for games randomly as a sort of screensaver. Not only does it look nice, it's functional too in that if you want to check the game out, you can press the A button and launch it and start playing right away. I think it's a neat looking front end and it's the closest thing we have to something like Emulation Station for the Miu Mini Plus. The only downside is that it does require a little bit of work to tweak it and we'll be going over that in this guide. To get Advanced Menu, installing it is very straightforward. We just need to navigate to the Package Manager in the Apps folder. Once it's loaded, we're going to press R once to go to the Apps tab and then scroll down once to the Advanced Menu program. We're going to make sure that it is enabled and then we're going to press Start twice to save it. This will install the app. And as you can see, if we scroll down here, we will see that the Advanced Menu app is available for us to use now. If you really like Advanced Menu and want to boot directly into it every time you start your Miu Mini, this is also very easy to do. We're going to go to the Tweaks app. We're going to navigate to System and then Startup. As we can see here, there's an entry called Start Application. We're going to change this to Advanced Menu. Now, every time you turn on your MIUI Mini, it will boot directly into Advanced Menu. You can still exit out of Advanced Menu by pressing the B button to access the main UI. I would like to note here there does seem to be a bug. When booting directly to Advanced Menu, the audio does not seem to work for the video previews. You will have to exit out of Advanced Menu and then go back into Advanced Menu for the audio to play. Now, I'm not entirely sure if that bug is happening to everyone, but if it does happen to you, you may want to just start in the main UI and then boot into Advanced Menu after starting your MIUI Mini. Adding videos to Advanced Menu isn't done automatically, and you'll have to do a little bit of work. If you don't add the video files, you won't see anything once you start an Advanced Menu. As you can see here, Dragon Quest Monsters does not have a video file, so nothing is showing. Thankfully, Schmersim and user Shaquille has done most of the work for you. If you have the tiny Best Set Go ROM set, this Google Drive link has most of the video and audio files for your games. You can download and extract the files using a program like 7-Zip. Please do keep in mind, Google Drive is a little bit on the slow side, so it may take you a little bit to download the zip file. Once you download the file, it will be named miutinybestsetsnappack.zip. You can extract it using a program like 7-Zip. Once you navigate inside, we'll see the ROMs folder. Now before we copy it over, I'm going to show you the file structure. So inside each emulator folder is going to be a folder called Snaps, and this is where you store your videos and mp3 files. If you look in here, we see .mng and .mp3 files. Now, if you've never seen this before, don't worry, these are legitimate files, it's not a virus. It stands for Multiple Image Network Graphics. It's very similar to like a GIF, where it's a series of PNG files that form an animation. So they're completely legitimate, no need to worry about them. Alright, once you're back in the rounds folder, we have two options, and the first one is the easiest. If you have downloaded and extracted the entire Tiny Best Set Go ROM set, including the expansion packs, you can just simply drag and drop the ROMs folder into your main directory. Now, please do keep in mind that this is a pretty significant file size. It's 12.5 gigabytes, so make sure your micro SD card has enough free space for the pictures, as well as additional free space for save states and save files if you're going to do this. Now for the second step, if you're like me and you only have certain systems downloaded, then you don't have to copy over the entire set because it'll just take up useless space. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight and copy over the systems that we have installed. To do this, it's very simple. Just hold down the control button on your keyboard and we're going to start picking the systems that we have. So Famicom or, or Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, PlayStation, and Super Famicom or Super Nintendo. I do have some systems where it wasn't included, including GNGO, Nintendo DS, and Scum VM, but we're going to ignore that for now. What we're going to do is hold and drag over the files and copy them over. As we can see here, it's 6.39 gigabytes of space. And it'll take a little bit of time to copy over. Now, I already went ahead and did this step, so we can see the files are already there, so we can skip it. But when you're doing it for the first time, just let it copy over. It may take a little bit of time. That's going to be it. Once it's done, you will now have video previews along with the audio for each game in the Tiny Best Set Go ROM set. After copying over the snap files and starting advanced menu, you may notice a few games are still missing proper video previews. If we go to our earlier example of Dragon Quest Monsters Caravan Heart, you'll notice that it's missing video previews. This may be because either the file was renamed or a new game was added to the Tiny Best Set Go ROM set, or you yourself added a game to your ROM set. In the case that the file was renamed, this is very easy to fix. If we navigate to ROMs, Game Boy Advance, and Snaps, and we take a look at the original name, it was Dragon Quest Monsters Caravan Heart, followed by which team translated the game. If we navigate to our ROMs folder, and then to Game Boy Advance, we'll see that the file name was shortened considerably to just Dragon Quest Monsters, Caravan Heart Japan, and then a note saying that it was translated. It's a very simple process to rename this. We're going to click on the file to make sure it's highlighted. We're going to click once to make sure that we can highlight the name. We're going to hit Control c to copy the name. In the Snaps directory, we're going to highlight the file that we want to rename. We're going to click on it once to make sure we can highlight the entire name. We're going to hit Control v to paste the new name in. We're going to be doing the same thing for the mp3 file. If any of the games were renamed, all you have to do is rename the video and audio files to match the ROM name exactly. Now, once we go back to our handheld and start advanced menu, you'll see that Dragon Quest Monsters has proper video previews. In the case new games were added, We'll have to download the video previews ourselves using scraper.net. Head over to the website and click the download link. Download Scraper for the operating system installed on your computer. Once it's downloaded, the file will be named scraper-1.1.1.7z. The version number may be a little bit higher depending on when you are watching this video. Extract the contents using a program like 7-zip. Once extracted, click on scraperui.exe. If you don't trust third-party software, run it in a virtual machine. The first time Scraper starts, it will take some time to download more files. It took me roughly 14 minutes for this step, so you can go ahead and leave it running while doing something else. After it's finished, a configuration wizard will pop up. You do not have to create an account with Scraper. I personally don't like making accounts if possible, so I selected the I don't have an account and I don't want to register option. Check the yes I am sure box. If you already have an account or want to create one, then select the other options above. Upon hitting next, you'll see the front end selection. I went with the generic emulation front end since we are not using these other front ends. For the game and ROM screen, click the little folder icon and navigate to the ROMs directory on your micro SD card for your Miu Mini. You'll notice that it automatically detects Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Nintendo DS, Scum VM, but not the other systems. This is okay. Proceed to the next screen. We'll leave the media to default and click next to finish. Once we're at the scraper UI, click on the media tab. 
change the media type to video or normalize video. I like keeping my files on my desktop, so I created a new folder called videos on my desktop. If you don't know how to create a new folder, you can right click on anywhere on the desktop and then select new and then select folder. Click on the little folder icon in the output folder section and navigate to the folder you just created. Navigate back to the games and front end tab. In the left hand section, we'll be adding the systems that weren't recognized. Click the little plus icon in the lower left hand corner. Navigate to a system you want to add like the Sony PlayStation 1. Click on it to highlight it, and then click the OK button to add that system. Make sure Sony PlayStation is highlighted in the left column. Go to the Games and ROMs folder section, and click on the little folder icon. We'll navigate to our PS1 ROMs directory, which will be located in the root of our SD card. In the ROMs folder, and then the PS folder and then click OK. Make sure to repeat this step for every system that you want to add. The correct ROMs directory must be selected for this process to work. Now you can do your entire ROM set all at once if you want to, but I would advise against this as this process takes a lot of time and you are limited to 20,000 scrapes per day. That may sound like a lot, but if you have a large ROM set, you will easily burn through that. If you do hit the limit, there's no need to panic. You just have to wait one full day and then scrape again. You won't re-scrape the games that were already finished. As a side note, it took me roughly 30 minutes or so to complete the PlayStation 1 ROM set in the tiny best set. If you don't want to scrape all the systems at the same time, you can remove systems by clicking on a system and then clicking the minus icon. Hit yes to confirm. Once you're finished, we'll now convert the mp4 files into mng and mp3 files using Schmertz's script. On your micro SD card, navigate to the app folder, events menu, tools, ROMs and medias management, and then copy the mp4 to mng folder over to your desktop. Now you will want to copy all of the video files that you scraped from the video folder on your desktop into the video folder in the mp4 to mng folder. Right click on the mp4 to mng ps1 file and then select run with PowerShell. If you're curious as to how it works, you can select edit and take a look. This process will also take a while. I'll go through each video, turn them into PNG files, and then combine the PNG files into an MNG file. Once the conversion is finished, I'll move the video file into the done folder in the videos folder, and then move the MNG file into the MNG folder. Once you have the files converted to MNG and MP3 files, copy them over to the snaps folder in the correct ROM folder. For example, if you created some PlayStation 1 preview videos, Copy them to the root of your SD card, ROMs, the PlayStation folder, and then Snaps. The files have to match the ROM file name exactly. For example, if you have a file named Alundra USA Revision 1.chd and is located in SD, ROMs, PS, then the corresponding MNG and MP3 file should look like this. Okay. Now that we have all the video and audio previews created and copied, we'll go over the features of Advanced Menu. You can change the display layout of Advanced Menu by pressing Select. It'll switch from 2 rows of 3 videos, to 3 rows of 4 videos, to 4 rows of 5 videos, to 6 rows of 8 videos. It doesn't stop there. It goes to 9 rows of 12 videos, to a ridiculous 12 rows of 16 videos. For these last two modes, the Miu really chugs because so many videos are playing. After that, it goes to a more sane layout of one video preview taking up the full screen. You have an alternate layout with a 3 image mix on the right hand side. There's also a 2 column list in only text. 
a single column list in text with the video preview on the right hand side, and an alternate layout with a three image mix on top of that video. Pressing A will launch the game, and pressing B or menu will exit advanced menu. Pressing L1 or R1 will go a full screen of games back or forwards. Pressing L2 and R2 will go to the beginning or end of the game list respectively. Pressing X will bring up a menu to sort the games. If you have trouble finding a game, I recommend sorting by emulator or by name. I believe the other options don't work as well because the games list is missing some metadata. I'm not entirely sure here. Pressing start will bring up the main menu. Under listing, you'll find the same sort menu brought up by pressing the X button. Mode will change between all the display layouts. My eyesight is not what it used to be, so I'm favoring the tile tiny layout, which has two rows of three games. The preview mode will change between snap, title flyer, cabinet, icon, and marquee, and this looks like it's more for the arcade games than the retro consoles. The settings section also looks like it's for arcade games mainly. You can calibrate the different joysticks of which the MiU has none. You can save all settings, restore all settings in case you mess something up, clear all stats, and then lock settings. The emulator section is very helpful in organizing your list. You can press Y on a console to enable or disable it. Pressing A will save the changes. For example, if I only want to see PlayStation 1 games on my list, I can disable everything other than PlayStation 1, press A to save, and now advanced menu will only display my PlayStation 1 ROMs. Volume changes the volume. Again, this is a little bit redundant and I believe it's mostly for arcade setups because you can just press the volume button on the MiU. The difficulty section seems to sort games by difficulty, but I don't think we have the necessary metadata imported, so it doesn't do anything as of now. The delete section will let you delete the video or audio previews along with the flyers if you had any. Clone will show clones of the parent ROM. Again, this seems more of an arcade thing. Help will show you the keyboard commands. Stats will show you all the games you have and which games have the most time, play, and most time per play. And finally, exit will exit advanced menu. I personally find pressing start to change the view mode or which emulators to display the most handy out of all of the other options. Also, L1 and R1 to navigate was very helpful. Other than that, I didn't really make use of the other features since I like to keep it simple or they were made for arcade games. One final side note of a possible bug, once you start a game from advanced menu and exit out back to the front end, the audio previews may stop working. Seems like the audio is a bit finicky and restarting the app helps. Just a quick side note, if you ever want to change any settings, you can find the configuration files in the root of the SD card in the BIOS folder and then dot advanced. And you'll see the advanced MAME and advanced menu.rc files and those files should have most of your settings. I hope this helps somebody. Anyways, that's gonna be it. I thought Advanced Menu was pretty neat on the MiU. It's a great way of getting a little sneak peek at all the games in your library, especially if you don't know what the games are like, and maybe if you're looking for something new to play. Thank you so much for dropping by and watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope this guy was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave one down below. I do read every comment, and I'll try my best to respond in a timely fashion if you need any help. As always, Onion OS is full of surprises and deep features. Thanks to the Onion team for making such a great OS. Hope you guys are staying safe and sane out there, and catch you guys next time.